Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in about 30 seconds. I just want to give you a little bit of context. The video you're about to watch is part of a series of educational videos. Some of them are taught by me. Some of them are taught by other instructors. The goal here is to bring in experts who've excelled in their niche or their industry over their career and let them teach over to you whatever they specialize in. There's a variety of tools, technologies, walkthroughs, sales, marketing, business, startup, growth concepts and ideas. Hopefully you can learn and the whole goal of all of these videos is to help you level up in your personal or your professional life. Enjoy. What is quality content? In this course, we answer that question very specifically just for you and for me because so many of us want to create quality content. We see that creators say, great content, great content. You need great content. Well, what is great content? Let's clearly define it for ourselves in this course that we may make great content going forward because really all we need to do is make great content consistently and help people online and we've got it made for life. It really is that simple. You've helped me to have that as my reality today. All I need to do is show up and make great content and help people from the comfort of my home office every day where I was just able to go in and be there for my family when I walked in from the shed instead of having to go work somewhere. I'm grateful to experience the gifts of that today which motivates me to give back, to think of you, to help you share the exact same things. In this class, we've got a pretty straightforward structure for you. We go over here and start off with the class project. Then we look at what is my idea of quality content. An example, we ask how do we each make quality content? Because that's the goal is for all of us to get our greatest quality content out to the world. Then we look at what is not quality content. Sometimes knowing what something isn't is helpful for making what it is. At the same time, everyone's definition is subjective. So this is my subjective definition of what is not quality content. We have an outlook for where to develop a more clear understanding of quality content and to learn it so it's natural for us. For me, it comes very natural to just make quality content today. And still the temptation comes though to make things that aren't. And that helps us to be guided into which quality content to create. What are people asking for? What do people want from us the most right now and for the foreseeable future? Finally, that takes us into the vision. We just create consistent quality content indefinitely and we've got it made. This is a course and a life about having it made, having fun and learning and doing our best. Thank you very much for taking this course with me. I'm honored to have a chance to share with you after seven years online as an entrepreneur, the best of what I've learned makes quality content versus what's not quality content to help you with your video production and or podcasting creative process today that you may share your quality content with the world. We'd love it if you share it with us in this class. What is quality content? I am thinking of a judge right now when it came to obscenity that said, quote, I'll know it when I see it. Quality content, for some reason, for a lot of us, comes into this exact same mantra that, well, I'll know it when I see it. That's quality content. There's a lot of subjectivity to quality content. One person's definition of quality is another person's definition of crap. Within the mindset of quality content is the understanding that all of us have different ideas of quality content. Therefore, what is quality content to me? To me, quality content comes from an honest share from whatever burning passion is inside my heart. The burning passion that's inside my heart today is this Skillshare class for you clearly defining what quality content is. Because after asking several Facebook partners in interviews what quality content is and uh, getting very vague definitions are basically that, well, I'll know it when I see it kind of response. Well, you just you make quality content and then you get a partner on Facebook. What does that mean? What is quality content? 
I am giving you an example now of something I think is quality content. Yesterday, I did a gaming stream on Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I did a $100 giveaway every time someone came in and killed me on my stream in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I set it up so that we could try and intentionally queue up in the same 100 person server. And then if someone came in the game, killed me in the game on my stream, I gave them $100. I gave three people $100 via PayPal yesterday from this stream. In my description, I also put the things that are most important to me in my life. My sobriety, my diet, my marriage, I put the sobriety first because if anything goes wrong with that, all the other stuff following it goes out the window. My diet is a clear focus on health, taking care of myself, being prepared to be of service, and if I'm going to be a good husband, I need to do those other two first. I put my years parenting, days as an entrepreneur online, and what I've created for the benefit of others out of the passion of my heart, along with links to all that below. I did this in a live video yesterday on Facebook and eight other or eight or so websites yesterday for three hours. I had a heartbeat monitor where I was wearing a monitor on my chest that's monitoring exactly what my heart rate was in the game. I interacted and responded to hundreds of comments yesterday and Facebook put this video out there for free to 53,000 people yesterday who were kind enough, hundreds of people dropped likes on it. We got $35 in donations. Yeah, you might argue I need a new business model. I lost, you might say in the short term, I lost $265 doing that stream yesterday. In other words, I used my 20,000 plus dollar live streaming studio setup to give people $300 yesterday while playing a video game and setting people up with a chance to look really good on stream. In addition to the money, how awesome were people feeling yesterday when they come in, kill me on my own live stream when I'm pretty good at the game? That to me is quality content. That was in my heart. That was a lot of fun. I did something people said, I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, did I mention I also wore a Batman costume for it. You might argue, my gosh, this guy's just trying too freaking hard. That's quality content to me. It's something that no one else has. That if you want to watch a show like this, I'm the only option in the whole world where you can actually win money and I'm dressed up as a character, and I also talk about real stuff in game, talk about things like someone asked, how much money do you make online? Which people were curious when I'm giving away hundreds of dollars during my stream, I talked about how much money I made, the 50,000 plus dollars I lost in the first several years of my business, the millions of dollars I made in the following years after that to pay off all the debt I racked up. We get into real stuff on my live stream. And to me, quality content is responding, especially if you're doing a live video or you've got something like a class that's answering questions. To me, quality content is creating something from your heart that is fun, full of passion, done out of love. I did this out of love yesterday because I love my viewers. I love playing video games. I love having the chance to connect people and be generous. I love being able to send three people $100 out on PayPal and it's not a big deal. I remember seven years ago, I lost $300, $350 was the negotiated price gambling on Call of Duty to my friends and I hated sending them that money and I wanted, I said someday, I'm gonna be in a place where $300 is not a big deal to me. Seven years ago, $300 to send that much out as a result of playing a video game and losing was a fortune. And yesterday, I dropped $300 out and it was no big deal. In fact, I've got 20 or 30,000 more dollars in the bank. To me, quality content means honesty. Honesty, it means I'm willing to get real, real with you. It means I'm willing to tell you all of the truth, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's awkward, even if it's scary. 
To me, quality content is what I see going to Alcoholics Anonymous every day, especially when people share and do speaker meetings. This is my definition of quality content. Each of us has our own definition. This, to me, is a clear description example of quality content, which I hope is useful for you in making a real difference in the world. How do we figure out what is quality content for each of us? You might look and say, well, okay, Jerry, that's great. You've, you put on costumes and play video games and give money away. That's quality content for you. How do I figure out what's quality content for me? Share whatever is in your heart. Just share whatever is in your heart. That is your quality content. That means some days what comes out might later be judged as crap. I've made things that I was full of passionate about. I got way into this cryptocurrency steam and for a year, all I did is relentlessly and endlessly pitch this cryptocurrency. That was in my heart. That's what I got all fired up and passionate about. I look back today and I'm like, oh boy. Whoo, we gotta learn, learn from that. And we're not doing any more of that. Whoo, yuck. But at the same time, that guided me into a new passion. That opened my mind up to doing things like putting on costumes and playing video games. It's the journey. We have great ideas. Almost all of us have great ideas almost every day. To me, quality content is sharing those great ideas openly with the world. For example, today, I just had the idea I've been working on something like this for a while, but I just got a very clear picture of it today. A TV show where it's basically like a speaker meeting. So if you go to something recovery like I do with Alcoholics Anonymous, or if you go to Al-Anon or Narcotics Anonymous or lots of those other kind of recovery groups, Gamblers Anonymous, Debtors Anonymous, they, at least at Alcoholics Anonymous, have speaker meetings where people get up in front of the room and tell their story for 20 minutes to an hour or so of what it was like and the honesty, the sharing levels I've heard in those speaker meetings have blown me away. Like, wow, I can't believe someone would talk about their sex life so openly in front of a group of people. I can't believe someone would talk about their violent criminal history in front of a whole group of people. That is amazing. That's quality content to me, to share those things especially that other people are unwilling to share, people are too scared to share, people are afraid to share, or people think it's against the rules to share. Quality content lots of times might be pushing the boundaries or even breaking or violating either clearly established rules or much more often just social norms. I did a stand-up comedy episode where I went into graphic detail about my sexual history and past and the thoughts in my mind. And there were a bunch of people who were offended. God, Jerry, that's terrible. That is what I had passion about at that moment. That, to me, is quality content to share uh, straight out of my heart. And that's what's tough with quality content is one man's trash is another man's come up. One person's idea of amazing content is another person's definition of filthy trash. The only way we can know for sure is whatever is our burning desire in our heart. Whatever you're really excited about. I'm really excited about this Skillshare course this morning. This course is answering something that seems to be in demand. We need to know very clearly what is quality content for each of us. Therefore, whatever that burning thing is you really need to talk about, it'll often be reflected in your thoughts. What are you thinking about? I woke up with a show today, an idea to do a show where people get naked and essentially do a speaker meeting of their life. A very honest, detailed, thorough, and... Uh, a sometimes obscene or gross testimony of some of the most memorable moments, some of the most exciting, scary, horrifying, and some of the most memorable moments of a person's life. 
often quality content may be things that can be tricky to figure out exactly how to do it. For example, something with nudity, not very easy to put anything like that up on Facebook or YouTube. However, when you have an idea for quality content and share it, people will help you figure out the entire business system. To me, having an idea and simply sharing it out in the open, that's quality content. It might help to also differentiate with what is not quality content. Therefore, our definition of quality content is sharing immediately what is in our heart and doing it with an intention of love, service, kindness, connection. When I shared my stand-up comedy, even though it was filthy and I used all kind of obscene language and I ended up taking it down later, my goal with that was to help people laugh and feel comfortable with themselves and feel comfortable telling the truth. And even though I've since taken it down, it still has made a difference on the world. As all the men and women and all the alcoholics, anonymous meetings I've went to have made a huge difference in my world. The way to learn art, right, I'll do a new episode, I'll do a new lecture for that. What is not quality content? Knowing, uh, to me, what is not quality content helps me differentiate and see when I'm off the path. What is not quality content is something inauthentic, unoriginal, done as a means to an end. For example, I've got a background of some generic stock photos. I've put up stock videos that I've used as a background for my show that I've just put the idea out on YouTube and on my podcast. I put these stock videos as a contrast to what I'm saying. These are totally fake, totally staged. This is the opposite of what I'm imagining in my Bear Biography show. The opposite of what I'm imagining great content is. Now, if you are on a stock video website and you're submitting to a stock video website, this might be great content. This is good enough that I've downloaded it and used it as a part of my content. Therefore, from the stock videography business, this might be great content for stock video. For me, what is not great content is something inauthentic, unoriginal, just trying to be like somebody else, just purely being used as a means to an end, where I don't care about whatever I'm doing when I don't give two Fs about what I'm doing at the moment and I'm just doing it so that I can make money later, I'm just doing it so I can build followers, I'm just doing it to impress people, when I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing as a means to an end, that is not quality content. When I'm just doing it because I don't feel good enough and maybe if I get a few more followers, after I've got 2.2 2 million or whatever, if I just maybe get a few followers more, then I'll feel good enough. If I'm doing it and I'm not feeling good enough, that's not quality content. If I'm just copying or imitating what someone else has done without a genuine passion and desire, but just trying to get the same results I've got, that's not quality content. I've done a lot of non-quality content. I've done a lot of sales pitch videos purely trying to hype up and make my investment go up. Not because I was excited about it, but because I wanted to make money off of it. There's a very small difference because lots of times what feels like passion is really a means to an end. Here's where I test out the difference. If what I'm doing today is good enough, even if no one watches it, then, that's quality content because I've got to experience it. If no one watches this course, it still helps me to focus on quality content today. That is the clear test for what quality content is because if it is useful for me, if I enjoy making it, that's quality content. If I feel like I need to suffer through it, struggle through it, be miserable through it, hate my way through it, that's not quality content. If I feel like I worked my butt off all day, that's not quality content. Because it's fun to make quality content. It's fun just to do it. Because it's a joy to do it. 
As you can see, this is just fun. I'm having a good time filming this. This is a burning passion in my heart. I need to hear this to help me differentiate what quality content is. Quality content is done out of the intent to serve and help others. Crap! or the opposite of quality content is done purely as a means to an end, to have power over people, to get people to do what you want to, to get people to make you money. There's nothing wrong with making money. Now, I love money. I'm rolling in money. I love, love money. Money is an awesome, fun energy we get to play with in the universe. There's nothing wrong with making money. To me, quality content is simply seeks to only essentially trick people into giving you money without a genuine connection or relationship or service that's crap and there's a lot of crap content in our world in fact i would argue probably 99 percent of the content we see is crap now all right maybe 99 percent of content on the internet and tv is crap advertisements for products people don't even use that everyone involved is just trying to make money off of I talked to a, a podcaster. He's been working on this ad. I'm like, have you actually used the product you're selling? Well, no, I, it must be good. Other people, how are you going to advertise something you haven't even used? And I'm facing the same thing on Flipboard. I just signed up for Flipboard. And I'm going to pull the Flipboard sponsorship off my podcast if they don't approve jerrybanfield.com as one of their publishers. Because that's fake to have something like that up. For me to have an ad up on something I don't use, that's not quality content. And see, this has been helpful for me even today because I pull the Flipboard ad, I lose 20 or 25% of my income on my podcast. Sometimes quality content means taking a big loss. When I did my stand-up comedy and I dropped that thing on Steam, I lost witness votes that cost me thousands of dollars within a few months because I dropped quality content on them. I dropped real, raw, the truth. I wanted to test if a blockchain is decentralized and really going to make a difference in this world. Can we share quality content that breaks a lot of the normal social rules and boundaries? And if the answer is no, then this platform is not doing any real good. It's just another group of people trying to make their own money. Quality content sometimes is uncomfortable or obnoxious. And sometimes you might even be ashamed that you made it later. I made my stand-up comedies. They've been real raw and real nasty. And those were quality content because I had a great time making those. I laughed my butt off making my own stand-up comedies. I couldn't believe the things I was saying were coming out of my mouth. I'm like, wow. Because most of the time I don't use profanity anymore and I live a very clean and sober and relaxing and you might even say boring life. I hope, I imagine this is super helpful for you as it is for me to clearly distinguish what is quality content and what is not quality content. Where do we learn and refine our skills at making quality content? For me, I learn and refine my skills making quality content by seeing it. What I see, then I learn how to make it. When I see amazing content, then that teaches me how to make it. And at the same time, when I watch crap and junk that's not quality content, it teaches me the same thing. Therefore, what I consume and take in dictates what kind of quality content I'm willing to put out. I am grateful for going to Alcoholics Anonymous every day. I see a lot of examples of quality content. People raising their hands and sharing really uncomfortable truths that are going on that day in their lives. People doing speaker meetings who share amazing things about their sex lives, about their criminal and violent history, and about their most shameful, embarrassing parts of their lives. That is where I learn what quality content is. I've watched some stand-up comedy that's shown me what quality content is. Wow, does this guy have courage to make a joke like that, which reveals so much about his own inner world. I've watched videos online and courses and seen this is what makes amazing content. 
This is a course that makes a big difference in my life. I listen to audiobooks by Wayne Dyer. I'm on right now, Brene Brown. Brene Brown, the Power of Vulnerability workshop she did, that is great content. I was listening to that with a hangover, just really wanting to do better in my life about five years ago, and I cried. Something that provokes and helps me feel emotion, that's quality content, and when that happens, that is a good opportunity for me to study and learn it. I generally like and prefer nonfiction, but things like Harry Potter, Harry Potter to me is quality content. That is amazing. The stories that are shared in there, even though you might say it's nonfiction. And there's lots of things that are fiction and nonfiction that are not quality content that just for some reason don't have that emotional impact. And it is different for all of us. What impacts you emotionally may not impact me emotionally. While some students may be taking this course like, oh my God, this is the highest quality course I've ever taken on Skillshare. Others probably sitting there, you know, this is just more same of the generic crap from Jerry. That's fine. When we see that quality content is relative, we realize the only person we really need to focus on in terms of quality content is ourselves what we feel from our heart is quality content that is our quality content and the way we get the best focus is to see how it's impacting others i have choose not to do my stand-up comedy today because the impact of that on others is not nearly as good as these gaming videos that i do that the tutorial videos the classes i do there's a lot of quality content i can make and how do I choose what to make out of what I'm passionate about? How do we choose what to make on a daily basis? Especially if you're like me, you've got so many ideas you want to run with and are excited about all of them, which ones do you get a hold of? I prioritize based on what is most in demand. Where am I getting the interaction back? Interaction is crucial to quality content. There's a lot of things that cross my path each day as the truth of the moment. One moment my truth is I'm so aggravated at this right now. Another moment is I'm so excited about this right now. Another moment is I'm so peaceful and relaxed, it's all good. Another moment it's I wanna make a video about this. Another moment I wanna play a game about this. Another moment I wanna make a, a bear biography show. The question is, which one of these do I focus down my time and energy on? I focus down my time and energy on that which is most desired from me. So while I said that creating quality content is an inside job, which quality content inside us comes out is a function of an outside job. What do people need out of us today? What are people most excited about today? I see so many comments on my gaming videos. Jerry, I watch your games while I'm at work. I love it and it entertains me and inspires me. Jerry, I'm staying sober, looking at your videos and seeing your sobriety each day inspires me. Jerry, I love watching your reactions while you're playing video games. My daughter laughs at my gaming video reactions. That is what inspires me to let out the videos and focus and make time and a priority out of doing the gaming videos. When I'm just trying to do whatever I think is best, lots of times I end up producing things that people aren't asking for. For example, the stand-up comedy. There were people asking me to do stand-up comedy or suggesting, I said, Jerry, why don't you do some stand-up comedy? And then uh, I did some more stand-up comedy. And uh, there weren't that many people. It was funny. Almost everyone saying I should do stand-up comedy stopped after I actually did it. And then I kept trying to do it longer until I got a lot of requests from family and people online. Stop doing stand-up comedy. That's enough. And that helps me to say, okay, well, and now I'm seeing more requests for stand-up comedy. I'd stay open to whatever the most pressing need is. 
if you really want Facebook gaming videos, I'll do those. I've seen several suggestions. Keep creating your Skillshare class. I see people continuing to enroll and watch in Skillshare. I see people wanting to use my classes and putting them out everywhere. I keep producing the classes because people love it. Say, Jerry, you are so good at making these tutorial and training videos. Good. I'm happy to do that for you because I have a huge passion for empowering you to get your quality content out there in the world. I love a world where you've got your quality content out there. Thus, what we choose to create out of our passion, which we bring to life, ideally is an interactive relationship function with all our fellow human beings. That which others are asking us to do the most is consistently guidance from the universe to do that. Do this. Jerry, do more video courses. Jerry, do more gaming videos. Good, I'll do that. And it comes in many different forms. It comes in likes on posts. Almost the only posts I do on Facebook that get a lot of likes are my gaming videos. I've done thousands of other posts. The gaming videos are the only ones that consistently get a lot of likes, so I do those. The tutorial and training and teaching videos I do consistently get a lot of likes and lots of ad revenue, lots of subscriptions on Patreon and Skillshare. Therefore, I do them. The stand-up comedy I did got almost nothing. I stopped doing it. The crypto pump videos I went way downhill. People I started to hate those. I stopped doing it. Now, I'm not to say that you should just stop doing anything because one person doesn't like it. I'm saying that I prioritize what I'm doing based on giving the people what they want. Give the people what they want and you'll be able to create quality content for life. Thank you very much for getting to the end of this course. I'm grateful for the chance to help you focus on what exactly is quality content. Because once we see clearly what quality content is, we can zero in on our creative efforts and ultimately change ourselves and make ourselves into the finest instrument of service for others. I love the chance to help you get your quality content out into the world today. Sometimes quality content comes really easy. Other times, quality content can seem elusive. While I said before you want to interact with other people, sometimes quality content takes a long time to mature. Consistency over time is critical. Almost every creator I've talked to with a following who has the trappings of what we might call success with money and followers, consistency. That's why I recommend do it on your own name. That's why I do everything on Jerry Banfield as a brand and I just keep putting everything out. That way I can do whatever I want to. Whatever my quality content is that day, I put it all out and people can follow me indefinitely. I'm able to be consistent and work all kinds of micro niche areas and then build a following up that goes all over the place and guarantees me the chance to work indefinitely just producing quality content. How about that for peace of mind and certainty as a freelancer? Thank you very much for helping me with that today. I am imagining this has been as helpful for you as it has been for me to focus on what my quality content is and what my quality content is not because the temptation often comes to make stuff that's not quality content, that's just done as a means to an end. Usually, letting an idea come and have a few days of time will tell whether it's a good idea or not. And usually feedback from others when an idea is purely pitched as an idea. For example, I've just pitched this show as bare biographies as an idea. I've done nothing to create it yet. I've just made an idea. Just pitching the idea is quality content, but trying to go through and film the whole show at this point before I've put it out there as an idea to get feedback, 
that might not be quality content. Showing I'm excited about a cryptocurrency, that might be quality content. Trying to pitch it to death to make my investment work out, that's not quality content. So this has helped me today to differentiate. I trust that when this has helped you, you will feel great about helping me and leave a review because if you want people to help you with your quality content, simple rule, you need to help others. Give that you may receive. If you wanna build a following and get people to watch your quality content, you've got to give back when someone else does something that's helpful for you and give back in a, a lot of different ways. A review on a course, sharing a course, talking about something on Twitter or Facebook, telling a friend when I experience quality content, I tell everybody about it. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for experiencing quality content today by Jerry Banfield. It's time to lose your mind and let the crazy out. This place about to blow. Thank you for my random Kesha interlude and ending the course. I love your awesome. I appreciate you watching every minute of this course or scrolling to the end. And I'll, I'll see you soon. <laughs>